for 300 bucks. It's a nice piece. Uh, unfortunately, we can't buy these anymore in Connecticut. Can't buy any of these in Connecticut anymore. So anything that resembles this or looks like this or acts like this, you can't buy them. Now, they did say that one time, uh, for instance, they came out with a 223556 that we can buy that does everything that these do, except that it hasn't got the grip on it. Well, this one hasn't got a grip on it, but we still can't buy this one. So, that's it, you know. <clears throat> then for a while they had it to where you can't buy an AK-47 because of what it supposedly is uh, and the caliber that it's in. But you can buy an AK-74, which looks just like an AK-47, an AK however, it's a different caliber. Now, the caliber that the AK-47 is in that you can't buy because of the caliber, you can buy this, well, back then, you were able to buy any one of these rifles or any other rifle in the same caliber that you can't buy the AK-47 in. You understand here? I mean, what is wrong with the system? <laughs> you know, you know I, I, I can't buy an AK-47 because of what it is in the caliber. But I can buy the same caliber in this rifle that they won't let me buy in this rifle. All right. I can buy an AR style firearm, 223556, semi automatic, magazine, 10 rounds, that's it, um, without the pistol grip. This doesn't have a pistol grip, but I can't buy this. I mean, it really doesn't make sense. You know, this is the stupid people that you got making laws. Right. Laws that shouldn't be made to start with. But meanwhile, let me get off that subject. This is the High Power 9. This is the AK. This is the Sig Sauer uh, 556. And this is the Stag T2. This is the White's firearm or rifle. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so meanwhile, back at the ranch. Took him to the range. I put a lot of rounds through the uh, SIG 556 because of a stupid problem. Let's talk about stupid for a minute. User, user issue. When I take these guns and I use them, when I clean them, I take the scopes off. Now, by the way, this is a scope. This is the Pride Fowler, PFI. They also call it the Rapid Radical. Um, it's a, Q, a CQR. CQR1, something like that. I don't remember now, but uh, it, I like it. It is a, it's a piece of work. It really is. And the design on it is so that it comes right up on you. Now, there's a lot of them coming out there like that, but this was one of the first ones. Rapid Radical. Um, Pride Fowler Industries, PFI. They're not cheap. Uh, they're, they're, for, they're a good price for what they are. However, they're not filled with bells and whistles, um, you know, that you're paying a lot of money for. You, you're paying a lot of money for quality, basically, in my opinion. And again, we all have them. Now, I have other scopes, um, but let's talk about this one for a minute. So anyway, <laughs> went to the range with this thing after last year. Um, and... Uh, for some reason, I had Carmen with me. We could not get this on paper. I'm saying, why can I get this on paper? This is crazy. You know, this thing out of the box, when I put the scope on it, you know, I mean, I was hitting clays, you know, at, at 200 yards without, a, without an issue. I mean, you know, just point and shoot. Didn't even have to really look for it. It's, it just, the bullet knew right where to go. Why am I having all these issues? I can't even hit a, a two by three piece of paper. I'm saying, wow. So what the hell is wrong with it? And I'm adjusting it. I'm adjusting. I'm adjusting. I, I can't get this no matter what. All right. I just can't get it on paper. So finally, I got disgusted with it. I says, okay, forget about it. I'm going to shoot the other ones. So I used the other ones. Carmen tried it. He couldn't get it on. All right. Now, Carmen was relatively new. 
the firearms, but sometimes it takes a new look at something. You know, sometimes we, uh, let me turn this down. Sometimes we that think we know all overlook the, the silliest things. And I'll tell you why. So anyway, I couldn't get this on paper. I come home, I take it apart, or start to take it apart to clean it. First thing I do is take off the scope. Well, first thing I did was take off the scope. The scope was sitting there. And I said, I don't know why this wasn't hitting paper. I had it on the right part of the rail. I made sure it was where it was supposed to be. You know, where I had it adjusted to the last time. Everything. Why isn't it hitting paper? And it's sitting on the fire on the rifle like that in that position. And I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. I say, this is ridiculous. Well, and after I look at it again, I say, wait a minute. I wasn't even paying attention to it because I was so busy trying to get it on paper that I wasn't paying attention to how it was mounted. Well, apparently, in the interim of cleaning and taking it apart the last time and putting it back together, uh, anything wrong with this picture? Well, you may not be able to tell, but um, it goes that way. Somehow or rather, <laughs> the scope ended up on the rifle backwards. I wasn't even paying attention to it. All right? I wasn't even looking at it. <clears throat> I was more looking and paying attention to trying to get it on target than I was looking at the scope to see that it was sitting on the rifle backwards. It's supposed to have been that way. And it was the opposite way. I'm saying, what the hell? It didn't even look right. It looked like I was looking through a straw. You know, I mean, like tunnel vision, you know, and I, again, I didn't even notice it, all right? Now, Carmen, um, he actually didn't notice it either, to be honest with you. So, but uh, that's what happened there. Uh, now, what I keep on this one is this. Now, this is a, uh, I think it's a 116 by 44. Uh, it's a sight mark, I think. Which isn't a bad scope. It's not one of the best scopes in the world, but it's a good scope. I would run this on my, uh, on my, um, SIG, or the wife's stag. But, um, uh, it's a lot of scope for this gun. Uh, but it, it's a fun, fun gun to use. And, um, the scope, like I say, it's not a bad scope for the money. It really isn't. This is the Sightmaster. I think it's an 8, well, I don't think. I'm looking at it here. 88257. Uh, I think it's like a three hundred dollar scope. I'm not positive. It's not a lot of money, but it was it was a nice scope uh, for the money. It's a fun scope. It works, and I would use it on any of them. How it would work under abuse, I don't know, but it's a fun scope with a fun gun. Now on the AK, I run just a cheap, cheap, cheap piece of crapola. Uh, I run the True Glow, which is just a dot. All right, um, it works. I have no problems with it. It's on the, it's on target. You know, it's on paper, uh, and it, it's a, it's fun. Comes off quick, because if the battery does does go dead on you, you're kind of screwed. So you want to be able to pop it off and run the sights. All the sights on these, by the way, the iron sights are on the money. So if I ever have to take this off, I can run the iron sights. I like iron sights uh, more so. Yesterday I was with Tom and um, he was running his Smith and uh, on his Smith all he runs is iron sights um, and he wanted to make sure they were still on and they were right there on the money. They're always there for you. Once you set them more than likely they're going to stay. So, But that's what I run on the AK. The SIG, I told you what I ran on the SIG which is the Pride Fowler PFI also known as Rapid Radical um, which I like. Uh, that's what I run on the SIG, and now that I've got it on right, I've got it back on paper. It took me a while, but I got it back on paper because it was on there backwards. Did I tell you that or did I not? I'll go over again real quick just in case. Went to the range last year with this, and when I clean them, as you can tell, I can always take off the scopes and, and uh, set them aside. But meanwhile, take it to the range. And Carmen was with me at the time, uh, which was relatively new to firearms, but 
uh, good kid. He had since passed away at a very young age. He was 50 years old. But at that point, we're there. We're at the range. Um, I could not get this on paper for some reason. I'm trying to figure out why can I get this on paper. I couldn't figure it out. I'm adjusting these things. I'm a, I, I cannot get it on paper. So, come to find out. I couldn't get it on, so I finally put it aside, and I used the, the wife's gun. Come home, I'm cleaning it, getting ready to take it apart, and I'm looking at it, and I take it off. I said, wait a minute. Dad, I didn't do that. I did. What I did was, that's the way it was on there. Well, guess what? As you can tell, it's on backwards. That's the way it was supposed to be. So not even paying attention as to how it was. I was looking to see how it was mounted to make sure that it was in the right place on the Picatinny rail. You know, which wouldn't have made too much of a difference. That would just give me a little bit of a difference in my um, my buffer zone, you know, between the eye and the, um, yeah, the scope. But it really wouldn't have made that much of a difference at that point when you're trying to get on target. Well, paying attention to that, I wasn't paying attention to that. And now we got telemarketers calling. Call from oh wait, this may be about a house. Okay, so anyway, I lost track of where we are because I was just talking to a real estate agent. Um, this one was actually in New Hampshire. Hmm. Now, there's, a, there's another one for you. But meanwhile, back to this. The scope was on backwards. So once I found this out I turned it around the way it was supposed to be we went to the Rangers today it took me a while to get this on the paper because it was like two three four feet off um, you know and when you're trying to hit a piece of paper that's two feet by three feet just a piece of white paper that's all I put out there um, I put it at the 50 yard line so that uh, I can have something to work with and watching the backstop seeing that it wasn't even near the paper you know I like pulling the trigger on the paper and not hit you don't know where it's hitting so what I did was basically put it on the paper and then I didn't even look at the scope I just looked out at the backstop pulled the trigger and seeing where it went and I'm aiming for here and it's going over there someplace so finally got it on so that's that one so so the PFI pride follower industries it's also known as rapid radical Apparently they have a, or did a lot of work with the government, and I think you've seen this one. This is the one I just had, the uh, Sightmaster. Inexpensive, $300. It works. It's not a big deal. It's not a bad scope for the money. Uh, originally I had a problem with it, though. It did go back, but uh, they took care of it. No big issues. Um, on the AKA, uh, I keep this little glow dot. It's a uh, true, true glow. Um, Again, it's not a bad little dot. I mean, I think I bought this at Cabela's for like 50 bucks or something. You know, just to have something to put on. Because I don't use it a lot. And when I do use it, most of the time I use the sights. And then we got the wife's stag. 2T or T2 or whatever. Um, and she runs another Pride Fowler piece. Pride Fowler Industries. Um, and it's called the uh, Ops 33 and it's just a dot but I'll tell you it's a nice dot now the only difference between a lot of these and, and some of the other ones that are out there is this does take a battery you know um, and that could be a pain in the ass at times because when you run in a dot if you haven't got a battery you haven't got a dot um, now I always keep spare batteries in my ammo case which is always in the truck so it's not a big deal um but at that point uh, it does have auto shut off but the batteries don't last forever but this is a nice little piece as well actually um this was originally one of the ones i, was, I wanted to buy originally for mine but uh when i called up about it they were telling me that um they were so far behind because the military was uh, grabbing them all up. I said, well, if that's the case, then, you know, what do I got to wait? So 
She said, well, you know, give me a, a couple of weeks, give me a month, give me two months, give me three months. You know, I mean, it just kept going and going and going to a point to where I'm trying to find where the hell the dot is. Well, I can see it, but I don't think you're going to see it. Yeah. Anyway, let's see if I do this. Oh, there it is. If I can find something dark to put it against. Why? Oh, man. It does pick up a lot of light, too, which is nice. There's the dot. Now, it's not where it's supposed to be, only because the camera's not where it's supposed to be, but there it is. So, but meanwhile, it's a nice piece. Uh, it took a while, actually, because like I said, um, the military was apparently grabbing all these up. Uh, so I heard. I, I can't say for sure. I can only tell you what I heard. Uh, let me hit the off button here. But again, that's uh, the Ops 33, and that's also by Pride Fogger, which is also known as Rapid Radical, um, PFI Industries. So, uh, I kind of, I kind of like the PFIs, to be honest with you. Uh, just something I was weaned on, you know, not so much weaned on, but. Yeah, when I decided that uh, I was going to get more so into the scopes, uh, and I got into the PFI, I said, wow, you know, nice piece, and that's kind of like where I've been. But meanwhile, that's what we got. We got the uh, High Power 9, the AK, the SIG 5.56, and the Stag T2. These are both uh, 5.56s that will shoot 2.23. So... But now it's time to clean them and uh, see what happens. Let the fun begin. I think I'll just pull the chair over here and sit down. Yeah, my back's been bothering me the last few days. So uh, just ah, not feeling right, you know. Just one of those feelings. Something's not right, but you don't know what it is. And that's what it is. So, All right, so... Uh, let me shut up. I'll catch you guys in a few.